Welcome to Blackbriar Gaming. This is a pretty exciting video because it's my first look at the Legion rules for Legions Imperialis. While I don't have the rulebook myself, I've watched and re-watched Gorilla Miniatures Games videos on the Legions, madly writing down the rules as he read through them at a million miles. So, while I'm 95% I've recorded these correctly, there may be the odd glitch here or there, so be kind. I've also simplified the rules down on purpose so I don't have to subject myself to Games Workshop's penchant for long-winded rules writing. But you'll get the gist. We'll not only look at the rules, but now that we have a mostly solid understanding of the game itself, we'll have a go at rating the legions. We don't have enough information of gameplay experience to, to do anything close to a tier list, but I'm going to be giving my overall impression on whether the legion is looking hot or not. Just a quick note before we get into it, a subscribe and a like really helps us reach a bigger audience, so if you enjoyed the video, please hit those buttons down below. So we'll start off with the Dark Angels. They get formations of the Hexagrammaton. If a formation contains three or more different detachment types, the formation may choose one of the following rules. All infantry gain implacable and phosphex, all cavalry gain outflank, or all vehicles gain nimble. So there's a few things to this rule. Firstly, you have to have three different types of detachments in your formation. So for instance, um, infantry, uh, vehicles, and flyers, for instance, within the one formation. So already that's putting a bit of a tax on how you build your army to be able to access this rule. Now within that formation, it has to have the different types, but only one type of unit within that formation will gain a special rule. So the tanks and flyers, for instance, if that's the route we went within that formation, gain no special rule at all if you went down the infantry route. Now looking at the special rules themselves, implacable, I'm not overly impressed by, and I may be wrong in the end, but it comes down to close combat, and implacable is you get to decide whether you do or do not withdraw from combat, um, even if you lose and fail your morale. So I guess it depends how strong combat's going to be and what kind of, you know, how you build your army, I suppose. Um, it does mean you can make some pretty impressive last stands with your infantry on objectives, but if they're getting swamped, the enemy's probably captured the objective already. And noting this is a very objective heavy game, I just... I just don't see the huge advantage from implacable myself. I think shooting is going to be the much uh, more powerful way to destroy uh, enemy units in this game. Combat, close combat, um, uh, however they're calling it, close assault, uh, is very, I think, decisive in the way that it plays out. But getting there is, uh, is I think, going to be a challenge for certain armies. And certainly, if you're building a more balanced army, uh, is something which you have to with this uh, this special rule, right? Something you might not be looking at dedicating towards. Now, Phosphex, we don't know what it does. If that does start to make things into dangerous terrain, for instance, that could be quite good. Um, but I dare say the range on that will be quite short. So that's something to consider there. Now, Cavalry gaining outflank, I mean, it means they've got to be in reserves to do it. It means they're coming on in later turns. I, maybe, I'm not sure exactly how the reserves work. I think the Cavalry are already pretty fast and the boards aren't that huge. So I don't know if coming out coming on from outflank for cavalry specifically is all that powerful. Outflank for things like, you know, walkers, that's probably pretty good. But for cavalry, I just don't know if they really need it. And lastly, vehicles gaining nimble. We don't know what nimble does. We can assume it's something to do with their movement, uh, perhaps their ability to go over difficult terrain without taking uh, taking tests. It could have something to do with being able to fire certain weapons after marching. There's all kinds of things that could that could have to do with, but it will definitely be around the movement of vehicles. Now, the range of weapons on vehicles are pretty significant. I think in most games, you'll find that in the first turn, if you give them an advance order, they're going to be able to move and still fire, get some shots down. I mean, you're looking at between kind of, I think 12 to 20 inches for most of these vehicle weapons. And on a four foot table, once you've already moved, you can, and the enemy's moving, we're assuming, you're going to be getting in there. So I don't know if nimble on the vehicles uh, is enough to push this rule over the edge either. So when it comes to the Dark Angels and their rules, their Legion rules, are they hot? I think they're not. So sorry, Dark Angels, you do not get a hot rating. Moving on, the Emperor's Children, Exemplars of War. The player can choose to win the initiative once per game. If, they're, uh, if they've included... As, uh, no, okay. 
If they're included as allies, there we go. The player can reroll the initiative once per game. So this is pretty good. Uh, I think initiative is going to be very clutch in certain moments and being able to just win it once per game is pretty good. Now, because this game works differently to, uh, to a lot of Games Workshop's games and you've got alternate activation, it does just mean that kind of one of your detachments gets to go before your opponents. So it's not a massively huge impact here. Um, it can definitely swing a turn, right? So it, it can, in the right circumstances, have a nice effect, certainly if you're running some bigger units. Um, but uh, I don't know, uh, being able to just win it once and that just means one unit gets to essentially shoot is what you'd be using it for uh, before your opponent's units. I think because this game has so many units, so many powerful things on the board, um, so much going on. I don't know if one unit getting to shoot first is, is that impactful in the end. Now, the allies piece is kind of nice. It means once per game, you can re-roll an, the initiative. Um, so Emperor's Children, and there's a few particular um, legions that work really nicely as allies. And I think Emperor's Children are one of them. Uh, we saw them used as allies in the Battle Report in the White Dwarf for this very reason. So they're, they're nice from that perspective. But yeah, winning the initiative once per game, I don't know if that's super powerful. I don't think it is. So if we're determining whether they're hot or not, I'm going to say not. Certainly not when you compare them to the Iron Warriors. Now they've got the special rule, the bitter end. When determining which player controls a neutral objective marker, Iron Warriors infantry and walkers count their tactical strength as one higher than normal. When determining who controls an objective marker in a deployment zone, Iron Warriors, Infantry and Walkers count as too higher. I think this rule's fantastic. Maybe one of the most powerful across the legions. Essentially, your Infantry of Walkers are always going to be better at doing the most important thing in the game, which is capturing objectives and scoring victory points. In a pretty balanced fight, you're going to come out on top. Even if, you know, you're, <laughs> you're being killed at a higher rate than your opponent, so you're coming from behind. Uh, this will still allow you to capture objectives. Uh, it's just a really nice swing mechanic. It's always on. It applies to the majority of your army. Really good. So is the Iron Warriors hot or not? It is hot. Our first hot rating. I think that's a really easy one to give there. Moving on to the White Scars. Born in the Saddle. Units that can jink improve their jink save by one to a maximum of three plus. Now this is a very thematic one, very narrative for the White Scars. They want to have a lot of flyers. They want to have a lot of land speeders. They want to have a lot of jet bikes and bikes, which we assume jink applies to all of those units. So in this case, it's improving their save. Is this good? I think so. Uh, it really helps you out in the way that you want to play a White Scars army. It's always on when you're getting shot at, which is great because these units are going to be probably a bit more fragile and open to being shot at, particularly the flyers, easier to see um, than other units. So for White Scars and what you'd want, I think this is hot. I think this is giving the White Scars exactly what they want uh, and leaning towards the way you want to build a White Scars Legion force. So there you go, White Scars, hot or not, it is hot. Next up is the Space Wolves. Pre to natural sensors. Enemy infiltrating detachments cannot be deployed within 16 inches of any Space Wolves model. Outflanking detachments cannot be deployed within 8 inches of any Space Wolves model. I don't love this. Um, it's relying on your enemy having a certain type of force. It's relying on your enemy choosing to use those special rules. What it's shutting down, I don't think will have a huge impact on the game anyway. Uh, look, it might be a really nice counter to some Raven Guard, perhaps, and we'll get into that a little bit later. But outside of that very niche case, which you won't really find in narrative events, which most of the events for this game will probably be narrative events where Space Wolves are fighting traitor forces. Um, I just I just don't think it's that relevant. Uh, it's so niche. It has such a, a, a mediocre impact on the game and only in certain circumstances. So is it hot or not? I'm sorry, Space Wolves, you are not. Moving on, Imperial Fist, big swing, disciplined fire. So detachments issued with first fire order gain accurate. Reroll misses for the following weapons. Bolters, combi bolters, bolt pistols, missile launchers, plasma cannons, las cannons, and auto cannons. Now at first glance, this looks so powerful, but it is only for first fire orders, which means 
you're not moving. So I don't think it's imbalanced as such. I don't think it's over powerful. Is it good? Yes, I think so. Uh, firstly, it's all detachments. It's not just infantry. Um, it's for so many different types of weapons. Uh, Laz cannons in particular, I think it's going to be absolutely fantastic against you know, enemy tanks. Uh, you've got missile launchers in there, which you have wide access to across your army with being able to attach them to our tactical detachments. And they're coming first up in the, uh, in the box as well. So I think, and, and you know, in the, in the rule book as well, unlike some other heavy weapons, most of the heavy weapons, in fact, um, bolters, so bulk tactical Marines, um, first firing. Is it? Yeah, it's a tricky one though, right? Because they're not advancing. And if they're not advancing, they're potentially not moving onto objectives. So it really relies you to get onto objectives and then sit still, hunker down and fire. And if you're on to forward objectives, then maybe you're getting in, you're getting in combat either. Interestingly, the first fire does allow you to do a bit of an overwatch mechanic uh, from what we've seen in that if someone's charging you and you have a first fire order, or even if they're moving past you from my understanding, um, you do get to shoot at them before they charge in. And in this case, unless I'm incorrect, you would then get to reroll those misses as they charge in. So I think it's, it's good, right? Is it completely overpowered and broken? I'm not sure. I don't think so at first glance, but we'll have to wait and see until we get them on the table. But if it comes down to being hot or not, I think in this case, it is hot. Imperial Fist, they just can't help themselves. Next up is Night Lords. This one's a lot of fun. Seeds of Descent. If a Night Lords model destroys an enemy model with the Commander or Solar Auxilia HQ special rule, each enemy detachment within four inches of the destroyed enemy model suffers a number of hits equal to three times the starting wounds characteristic of the destroyed model. Detachments use their morale to save against these hits. Models that are broken subtract two from the results of these save rolls. Knights and Titans are unaffected by this rule. So there's, there's a lot going on here. Um, firstly, it's only uh, specific to enemy commanders, um, and often the enemy is only going to have one or two like, commander or, or HQ units within their entire army. They can have more, but I don't think they will because it gets pretty pricey. So at that point, it's only about destroying one model, right? Now, it's also only if your Night Lords destroy them. So if you've got allied contingents, you have to make sure your allied contingents aren't the one destroying that particular model. Um, at the same point, then the the bubble of uh, destruction only goes out four inches from a commander, which isn't that far considering the commander is probably going to be attached to a unit and uh, and surrounded by the models of that unit as well. <sighs> You're then suffering hits equal to three times the wounds. Now, commanders only have one wound at the moment uh, for Space Marines. We may see some Legion's commander models, special characters maybe, or Primarchs that have greater number of wounds. And in that case, it might be a little better, but then you're trying to destroy a Primarch. Um, it's it's hard. Um, I don't think it's overly fantastic. Oh, and then of course, you're taking three times the starting wound. So in most games, that's three hits for the, uh, for the units around the commander, and then they get to use their morale to save against it. Now, different forces have different morale, but Marines, standard, I think they have a three plus morale, mostly across the board. So you're getting a three plus save against this. So maybe you destroy a model, maybe. Um, yes, broken models subtract two from the result, but in that case, you're already, you've already decimated that unit. Do you care too much more about killing more of that unit? Probably not because they're restricted more orders they can have anyway. Eh, I, I, look, it's fun. It's very thematic. I get what they've tried to do here. Is it hot? I think it is not. So thank you, Night Lords. A lot of fun as usual, but uh, overly powerful? I don't think so. Now the Blood Angels in Carmine Fury. All Blood Angel, all models in a Blood Angels detachment that win a combat may move up to three inches once all withdrawals have been completed, as long as the detachment is not engaged. If a detachment engages an enemy detachment in this way in the fight phase and is yet to fight, the detachment can fight this turn. Interestingly, in the way the rules are written in the book, it says again. I don't know why they put again in there. That's not the case. It's contradicting itself in the same sentence. Fascinating. Games Workshop. Either way, is this rule good? I think so. Uh, it's doing what the Blood Angels want to be doing, which is, you know, speeding forward um, and just overrunning your opponent in, in waves of infantry and walkers and, and all kinds of other shenanigans that they're getting in there, decimating the opponent in combat, rolling on to the next combat. And, and this can chain, right? So you could win 
two or three combats potentially in a turn and just keep rolling into the enemy forces. Now the enemy can play around this by spreading out their forces, but if they're doing that, um, you're now dictating essentially the initiative, right? You're dictating how the enemy is playing this game just from this special rule, which I think is really powerful. Uh, I, I think it's good, right? So Blood Angels um, love combat. They want to get in there. And, and it's really nice to see something that isn't just like, you know, plus one to their, their attack rolls or something. This is a really interesting rule that's going to have significant maneuver impacts on the board. And that three inch move, it you know, it's good even when you're not rolling into combat. Uh, it means you're really consolidating on top of that objective. You're spreading your forces out. You're maneuvering onto other objectives, potentially uh, extra maneuver outside of the, uh, you know, the movement phase, if you will, is always going to be powerful in an objective based game. So is this hot or is it not? I think for the Blood Angels, this is hot, which is so nice to see after their slightly lackluster 30k showing. Now the Iron Hands uh, in Violet Armor. Models with the Feel No Pain special rule benefit from its effects when they suffer a wound, wound from, is it a wound? Do we call them wounds? Hit from a weapon with the light, oh no, it is wound in this case because it's gone through. Uh, sorry, with the light or light AT trait instead of just the light trait. So they're getting Feel No Pain against light AT weapons, essentially, where otherwise you would not. In addition, any hits scored against an Iron Hands vehicle or Super Heavy vehicle issued with a first fire order worsen their AP by one, um, that is the AP of the weapon shooting at you. So it will mean you're not at minus one armor save is, is the gist there. So is this good? Um, the feel no pain, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty niche. I think, uh, it's mostly, I think for allegiance force, you're getting that from the commander model who has that little apothecary on there and, and is spreading out the feel no pain. Is that going to be game changing? Noting that it's just against light AT weapons. I don't, I don't think so. Um, is your opponent shooting those light AT weapons at your Marines or is they shooting them at your tanks? That's a, that's another question to be answered. So I don't think that's overly impressive. I'm not that excited about it. Pretty niche. And, and it's also relying on the opponent to make a decision knowing this information. Now the vehicles piece, um, they have to have a first fire order, which is something you'll often be giving them. So that's not necessarily an issue there. Um, and getting plus one armor save, if they're fired at, um, it's okay. I don't think it's it's overly impressive or overly powerful. We'll have to wait and see for this one to be played out on, on the board. It will make vehicles pretty tough to move. Um, so oh, this is a really, this is probably the hardest one so far to rate. But if I'm gonna say, is it hot or not? I think in this case, I'm going to say not. Uh, I'm not overly excited by it, uh, and it relies on your enemy making some decisions there. There's, there's no reason why, for instance, you know, if, if all, if half of your tank units chose to go with first fire order and the others are advanced, your enemy for this turn could just choose to kind of direct their fire towards those that have advanced and instead of first fired. So it, it's really, it relies upon your enemy to make bad decisions is what this rule comes down to, rather than something that's always on that you get to dictate. So I'm going to say not for the Iron Hands. Next up is the World Eaters, Incarnate Violence. I love the names for these, they're fantastic. All World Eaters infantry, cavalry, and walkers can reroll a single D6 when making fight rolls. I think this is good. Um, World Eaters, they obviously want to be in combat. How powerful will combat be? I think for armies that are really dedicated towards combat, I think they'll do just fine. I think armies that are more balanced and try to uh, to push combat when they maybe should otherwise not, I think will struggle a little and that's where combat might seem a little weak. But if your army is just full of walkers and infantry and cavalry and you're just charging towards your opponent as fast as possible, I can I can see combat being, being pretty impactful and re-rolling a single D6 the way that fight rolls work is you roll 2d6, um, and unless you're outnumbering and, and then it gets a little complicated, but essentially you're rolling an amount of dice, adding those up, adding your close assault factor, being able to choose the d6 that, that wasn't great. Let's say you rolled a, a five and a one, being able to pick up that one and re-roll it, I think is really nice. Uh, it's much better than just having to re-roll in general. So yeah, so I really like it. Uh, it's doing exactly what the World Eaters want to do. And it's really nicely differentiated from the Blood Angels as well, which is great to see. So is it hot or is it not? I think the World Eaters are hot, which I love because World Eaters are great. All right, moving on to the Ultramarines. Interlocking Tactics. An Ultramarines model may reroll any hit rolls of one when firing in an enemy detachment that has already had one or more hits scored against them by an Ultramarines model from the same 
formation. Oh, Rerolling ones just seems like such a lazy mechanic. Um, we see it from GW all the time. I don't love it. In this case, not only is it a bit lackluster, um, it doesn't work in combat. Uh, as an example, it's only when firing. Uh, the det enemy detachment has to have already had hits scored against them um, by an Ultramarines model from the same formation. So it's not even um, you know from the same army. It's the same specific formation. So you're quite limited in that sense. Um, you have to then limit the way you move, the way you deploy. Um, it's limiting your options on what you shoot. Often models in the same formation will want to be shooting at different things because they're different types of units. So I don't, and, and you have to score a hit. It's not just if you shoot at them, it's you have to score a hit. And the, the, the hit rolls in this game, they're pretty high, right? Um, so that's not always a given. So I, I don't like this rule. And then you're only re-rolling once, <laughs> just the once, right? Uh, so I don't love, I don't love this rule. Uh, I think it's, it's pretty, it's pretty weak. Um, it'll land, I think pretty, pretty miserably for the Ultramarines. It'll be interesting to see. Please, if you disagree, put it down in the comments. Same goes for any of these rules. Uh, but I think the Ultramarines, are they hot? They are not. Sorry, Ultramarines. Moving on to the Death Guard, Sons of Barbarous. Death Guard models do not suffer hits when moving through dangerous terrain, and you may pick up to two pieces of area terrain to become dangerous terrain at the start of the battle if your army contains at least one Death Guard formation. You may select two structures in place of one piece of area terrain, and I think that implies you may select four structures uh, for this rule which is fantastic. I think buildings are going to be so important in this game. So being able to just close off four buildings in your opponent's essentially area of control at the start of the game or the the, the you know mid board ish structures that you know your opponent's going to want to move into and now you've just made them all dangerous terrain and your opponent's taking hits when moving in and out of them. I think that's fantastic. Uh, it's really determining how you're, or at least making some really difficult decisions for the uh, for the opponent on how they want to play the game, where they want to move, shutting down buildings. And I think buildings are going to be so important for cover saves and keeping infantry alive. Shutting them down is massive. And you get to do it the entire rule, unless I'm mistaken, with only one Death Guard formation. So by the looks of it, I think Death Guard at the moment are sitting as the most powerful allies in what they bring to the table. So is this rule hot? I think so. It is. It is hot. It is smoking. Uh, I am keen for this. Uh, it'll. We'll have to wait and see what the impacts of dangerous terrain are, but generally GW really penalize people for moving into and out of dangerous terrain. Certainly that's the case in 30k, and I think it'll be the same in this game. So really impressed with the Death Guard rules. Um, really different, really uh, really tactical in, in the way you can apply that and, and really interesting. So definitely hot for the Death Guard. Thousand Sons, poor Thousand Sons. They're 30K, they're struggling. And I'm, I don't, I'm not loving Kind Shield. So Kind Shields, models with the Commander Special Rule get the Shield Generator, six plus Special Rule. Essentially, uh, we don't know exactly what that means, but I'm assuming it means the detachment that your commander has joined gets a six plus invulnerable save. Now a six plus invul save, it's just, it's not that impressive. Um, a lot of times you won't even need a invulnerable save because most of the weapons that your opponent's going to want to shoot at your infantry aren't going to get through their armor. If they're shooting, you know, AP minus two or whatever weapons at your, uh, at your infantry, they might be doing it wrong anyway. Although I think that works a little differently in this game uh, in regards to the way that AP works with different types of weapons against different types of units. So so look, it might not be as bad as that. Um, I don't love it though. A, a six plus save just having that is never overly impressive or, or exciting. It's not like it's a, a mitigation role that you get to make after your save either. It's just instead of. So no, I, I don't love this. Commander models, you're probably only going to have one or two across your army as well. So, you know, giving a six plus invul save to a couple of detachments, mm, it's not that impressive. I don't love it. Um, the kind of detachments you're going to put on to put your commander in, maybe Terminators, for instance, um, to, to make them a little more survival and give them a little more staying power. The Terminators, they already have an invulnerable save. So yeah, don't love it. I think Thousand Suns again, once again, have been left out. Uh, with some pretty average rules. So is it hot? It is not. Not even close. Sorry, Thousand Sons. Sons of Horus, Death Dealers. Models with an advance order and within six inches of an enemy can reroll hit rolls of one when firing weapons with the light 
or light AT trait. Oh, this reroll one again. Uh, it's it's okay. It's better than the Ultramarines, I think. Uh, advanced orders are going to be very common in this game. I think that's going to be the go-to for the most part. Within six in inches of an enemy, I don't, I don't love, but I guess for most light weapons, for it, you will need to be that close anyway. Um, and but it's just once. It's just the rerolls of one, and it's just for light or light AT weapons. It's it's not groundbreaking for me. It's fine. It will come up. It's always on for your infantry, essentially, because you do have to get them this close, um, at least for their bolters. But, but I mean, are infantry better sitting back in buildings firing missile launchers? Probably in, in this case. Um, so is it hot or is it not? I'm going to say not for the, the Sons of Horus. Controversial choice, potentially. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm not blown away by this one. Word bearers, however, get true believers. Detachments never count as broken for the purpose of being issued an order. In addition, they ignore the effects of the Dread Aura special rule. Now, the Dread Aura, we assume that has to do with demons or, or certain demonic-like units um, that the, the web bearers may have access to. And maybe that's a hint that we'll see actual Legion-specific units, or maybe it's just a hint that demons are coming. Either way, the never count is broken for the purpose of being issued an order seems pretty good. So the, the idea is, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, when you are broken, you can only do, I could be wrong here, but I'm pretty sure you can't charge for one and I'm pretty sure you can't march. Now that could be wrong. I could track it down. I'm not going to, but either way, we know that being broken, which is down to half or less strength, limits the orders you can have. And, and I think having orders open to you uh, is so important because it's it's how you're going to get around the table. It's how you're going to capture objectives. It's how you're going to uh, to impact the enemy. So I think being able to always have those orders on, even if you're broken, is pretty good. Uh, I don't think it's absolutely game changing. Um, I don't think it's as good as potentially the Salamanders, which we're going to have a look at in the moment. But compared to some of the ones that are not, I think this is a bit better. So I'm going to rate the word bearers as hot in this case. Now, going on to the Salamanders, strength of will. When making a morale check, roll 2d6 and choose the result they prefer. All models get implacable. Now, I love this 2d6 piece. I think it's fantastic. Morale is going to be real important uh, in this game, and you only get one dice to roll it. So it can be super swingy, and an unlucky roll can really stuff you up. Um, so being able to roll 2d6 essentially means your Salamanders are going to be sticking around a lot longer uh, than your opponent perhaps will be or other legions would be. Then all models getting implacable. Um, it's better than, for instance, we uh, we had the Dark Angels where infantry sometimes, if they're in the right formation, get implacable. In a Salamander's army, just everyone gets it. All models, all the time, everybody, without without having to do any kind of shenanigans. So that's, that's pretty fantastic. So I think the Salamanders, uh, they are hot, which is great to see. Love to see some powerful Salamanders hitting the table. That, uh, that 2d6 morale is going to make such a difference. Now, Raven Guard by Wing and Talon. All detachments consisting of only infantry models gain infiltrate. Just all of them. All detachments with, with only infantry. Fantastic. Detachments with transports, cavalry, or walkers gain forward deployment. Uh, so I believe that is they get to make a free move, essentially, at the start of the game. That's really good. Getting to put bulk infantry, and you obviously focus towards infantry, just... Terminators, as far as I can see, right up the board. Um, I think it's within your board half for Infiltrate. I'm not 100% sure on that. Don't quote me on it. Um, but it means you're going to be in such a better space for capturing objectives on that first turn. It is outrageous. And blocking off your opponent from uh, from getting to objectives as well. The, uh, the forward deployment uh, with the rest is still great. So it's not just infantry. Um, tons of other types of units. Uh, get to get to move up the board quicker as well, which is fantastic. So the Raven Guard, I think, are hot in this case. Um, it's a very objective-focused game, and being able to just dominate the uh, the table in an early turn with tough infantry is really nice. Now, lastly, we come to the Alpha Legion Mutable Tactics. Select up to three detachments to be affected by this special rule. Infantry... Cavalry, walkers, and vehicle detachments can gain infiltrate, outflank, or forward deployment. If it's another unit type, they gain forward deployment. Allied Alpha Legion forces can choose just one detachment instead of up to three. This is good. Um, it is only three detachments, so 
you know, if for instance, you wanted to give a bunch of infantry infiltrate, which I think, or, or in this case, I guess walkers, right? So giving walkers infiltrate, I think is the most powerful outcome here. So giving three units of contemptors and, you know, leviathans, um, infiltrate and putting them on the on the the, the board middle middle of the board and, and getting to potentially charge the opponent in the uh, in the first turn unless of course there's a rule around charging much like there would is in in 28 mil 30k where if you infiltrate you can't charge on the first turn which may be the case we'll have to wait and see the specifics of rules if they can charge on that first turn absolutely powerful huge really good um but even being able to just really dominate the board in that first turn with something other than infantry um you know vehicles i don't know how close you want your vehicles to be i don't know if you want them that far up the board but walkers in particular i think is the the cool piece here and getting to have them way up the board um in your first turn uh before the game even starts in fact is is pretty good now it is only three detachments compared to uh the raven guard where, where just all of their infantry are infiltrating so is it hot or not? I think it's a very balanced rule. I think this one's absolutely fine, um, but I, I think it is hot because I think the potential here for shenanigans and that you get to choose how you want to do it. Once again, walkers coming in from outflank could be really nice um, and really, really threaten your, uh, your opponent's flanks and make them make some really bad decisions on how they deploy and how they move. So I'm going to say hot for Alf Legion. I really like this one. And that is all we have today it brings us to the end of our heresy chats thank you so much for watching uh, let me know in the comments if you think my hotness assessments are accurate or whether you change any of the, of the ratings one way or the other importantly make sure to keep rolling those dice and getting hyped for heresy